What's up, Navigation Traders? Welcome to this week's video update. Today is Friday, September 28th. Hope everybody had a great week of trading. Let's jump into the alerts for the week, starting with our first trade on Monday. It was a little bit of a slow week, uh, less number of trades than, uh, than we've seen recently, but uh, we'll go through that and kind of talk about why that is. First trade was an opening adjusting trade in ZW, which is wheat, and we had back-to-back -back trades in wheat. So essentially, we, we added on an iron condor in wheat to extend duration and continue managing that position. Uh, we're almost back to a uh, profitable position in wheat again, but man, it's been a wild ride. Been in it for quite a while, just continuing to battle uh, as, as, as we teach. Uh, so we, so we uh, opened a new one, and then the next alert was we closed out the, uh, the November one that we had on and booked over 40% of max profit on that piece of the trade. So let's go to the platform, and here's the one that we currently have on. You can see prices hanging out right here. Could use a little bit upside and some more time to pass to benefit that. Next trade was an opening trade. So we opened up a short strangle in SMH, the semiconductor ETF IV percentile popped back up above that 50 level that we like to see. So we sold some premium. Uh, this has been on for just a few days now here. So what you'll see is we've got a little bit of profit here, but not enough to take off. So just continuing to monitor that one. Next trade was a roll in oil. So we had a uh, an already adjusted strangle in oil, but we got down to that point where we were 21 days to expiration. And so when we get down to that point, we start looking for a time to roll out to the next expiration, extend duration, lower that gamma risk. I've talked about this before and, and on some other uh, training videos, but the closer you get to expiration, the higher your gamma gets. So gamma is one of the option Greeks. And basically what that means is your risk accelerates as you get closer to that expiration date. And so what we wanna do is we wanna roll out, extend duration, it cuts down on that gamma risk and gives us more time to, uh, to continue to manage the trade. So in this case, we had the 68 and a half calls, 67 and a half puts and we rolled that out to the 68 and a half uh, calls and puts. So we basically have the 68 and a half short straddle. And then we've got our other piece on as well. So let's take a look at both of those. So here's the one that we just rolled. You can see prices is, is just hanging out right here in the upper end of the range. It's gone up even some since we did the roll uh, up in price. And then, so we're just looking for some downside in price to benefit that. And then we've also got this other unadjusted full strangle on as well. Let me reset this so I can click on the appropriate boxes. Uh, and you can see price is pretty centered here. So just waiting for some theta to decay and some time to pass before we do anything else in oil. The uh, If we look at the chart, you can see it's up 2% today. So a decent move higher today. And then the implied volatility is still... Uh, very high with the IV percentile at 71, IV rank of 70. So good time to be selling premium, which is part of the reasons why, you know, when, when, when IV continues to stay high, I like to continue to add exposure to that underlying, still keeping within our risk parameters of not going overboard, not getting too large in any one symbol, uh, but, but adding to that to, to take advantage of the high implied volatility. Next trade was a, another rolling adjusting trade, this one in IWM. So this was a short call vertical that was originally part of our iron condor trade. We rolled this from October to November and then adjusted the strikes uh, appropriately. Uh, we had we were up over 50% of max profit on that short call vertical. And so it just made sense to roll that out, A, extend duration on that trade, keep that short delta exposure in our account, and, uh, and continue to, to manage that one. So if we take a look at IWM now, it's up a little bit today, but uh, here's, here's where that is. So pretty close to where we put it on, but we just basically, by rolling that, we captured that, that profit in the October cycle, 
and rolled it out to November to try to get some more. So we're we're almost back to uh, profitability on our IWM trade overall. And if we can get a little bit of a pop in implied volatility, potentially you know another push down would do that. Uh, we might look to add another iron condor on here, or we may just close it out depending on where we're at with our portfolio and with the overall profit on that trade. So we'll see what happens there. Next trade was a rolling adjusting trade in EEM. So we rolled our short, short strangle in EEM. So this was one that had already been adjusted, but we just wanted to roll it out from October to November. Uh, very similar to the oil trade, we got down to that 21 days to expiration in the current cycle, which was October. So we wanted to roll out to the next cycle. And when since we were doing that, we went ahead and uh, adjusted one of the strikes. So we left the call side alone, which is one that's kind of being tested right now. And we just took the 41 up to the 42. So now we have a 42 straddle in November. So let's go to the graph and I'll show you what I mean. So again, EEM, I was looking to actually add on to this position earlier this week, but even though implied volatility is, is pretty decently high, I uh, just wasn't getting enough credit in the options to make it worth it. So uh, I just continue to hold this position. This is, uh, we rolled our puts up from 41 up to 42. So now we've got the peak here, the 42 short straddle in November. You can see the October is zeroed out because that's where we rolled from. And so now we'll look for a little bit more theta decay, hopefully stay in a decent range here for us. Uh, if it does go outside of, of one of these sides, we may look to add depending on what kind of credit we're looking at getting at that point. So stay tuned for that. Next trade was an opening trade in forward slash 6E, which is the Euro. Uh, we like to have positions on in here anytime implied volatility warrants it. Uh, IV popped up right at about the 50 level. Uh, it was at about 54 actually earlier before I put this on, and then it came down just slightly at the time that I put this on. But uh, not a huge difference between 50 and 54 anyway, but just an FYI. So we'll just like a normal strangle, we'll look to close this between 30 and 50% of max profit, depending on how quickly that profit comes. And I also mentioned that you could do an iron condor or short strangle in either 6E, which is what we did with the euro, or you could look at FXE, which is the corresponding ETF. Uh, both of those are fine. In fact, if we look at uh, FXE on the chart, what you'll see is the implied volatility should be pretty similar right around that 50 level. You can see IV percentiles at 42, IV rank at 45. Pretty close, uh, but it's a it's a good ETF to be trading as well. Uh, we just like we like to switch it up between ETFs and futures. Uh, I know some you know if you're in an IRA, you probably can't trade futures. Uh, so, but I do want to give you that alternate trade in case that is the case because it is a good uh, decent time to be selling premium and a good unrelated symbol. So, you know we like to always have uncorrelated, unrelated symbols that help spread that risk, help spread that diversification. You know, so the euro isn't correlated necessarily to oil or stocks or um, natural gas or wheat or soybeans. So it's just another good broad diversification for us getting into some currencies like that. Um, actually, sorry, let me go back and take a look at the graph. We just put this one on. So not going to be much change. As you can see, price is dead centered in our uh, profile there. So just going to wait and hopefully collect some theta into next week on that one. And then lastly, our last trade, we closed out of our Tesla uh, short strangle. Huge drop today. Stock dropped 12% on the news that the SEC is uh, filing a lawsuit against Elon Musk. So a while back, uh, several weeks ago, Elon Musk came out and tweeted that he had secured financing to take Tesla private. Well, what happened is that obviously is going to affect the price of your stock when you say something like that, especially the way that he said it, how he had had secured financing. And so that was right in here, right after their earnings announcement. And you can see the price of Tesla shot up from around 300 all the way up to close to 390. Well, then some uh, news came out that 
it wasn't necessarily true that he wasn't potentially going to take Tesla private. So you saw the stock drop and continue to drop into the following week. And then last night or today, this morning, I can't remember what time, I think it was, I think it was last night, uh, news came out that the SEC was filing allegations that Elon Musk uh, had not secured that. And so it was kind of false uh, or misrepresentation to shareholders. And so the stock dropped 12% overnight. So that's where we stand. But what happened with our position is price was kind of hanging out in the upper range of our short strangle, you know, right up in this area. And with the drop, it put price right back dead centered into our strangle. Even though implied volatility spiked, we still saw a good little gain there. Booked it for over 35% of max profit based on the amount of time that we had in the trade. I was, I was hoping to get at least 40, but with it dead centered like that and as much as it's been moving, I thought, you know what, let's just take this off, book this profit uh, with, the, with the headlines going on you know, we'll probably get a chance to re-enter. We'll see what happens. We try to stay away from earnings. And if we try to enter in November, we're going to be dealing with earnings. So may not do that anytime soon, but, uh, but we'll see what happens. So those are all the alerts for the week. Let's take a, uh, let's take a look at some of the other positions that we have on, uh, starting with forward slash ES, the S&P 500 futures. So we've got a couple of different pieces on here. We've got one out in November. Let me reset these so I can check on the different boxes. We've got uh, we've got this short call vertical spread out in November. Again, this is part of an iron condor that we've just continued to roll for several cycles to keep that short delta in our portfolio. You can see we've got a tiny bit of profit here, just looking for some downside to benefit that, keeping that short bias in our portfolio. And we've got another short call vertical. This one is in October. And so you can see that right there. You remember when we rolled these two out, we rolled one to October, one to November, because November was under that 60 days to expiration. So it helped just kind of spread that risk, spread that time, uh, that time to expiration out. Gives a couple different uh, options there. So that's where that's at. You know, still in our range here, just looking for some more time to pass on that. And then we've got our long put vertical, which is a uh, part of a different trade. You can see price has since, uh, since we rolled this, has, has moved up and a little bit out of our range. So looking for some downside to get back in our range there. Another position we've got is Nat Gas. Uh, we've got a short strangle on here. You can see price is hanging out right here. Down slightly on this trade, could use a little bit of downside as well as just some more time to pass. We just put this on last week. So haven't been in the trade too long. So just waiting for some more theta to decay in that one. Uh, I mentioned wheat, Apple. So we've got our uh, long put vertical on in Apple. You can see price is slightly out of our range. Uh, you know, obviously Apple has been extremely strong over the last um, several months for sure. Uh, I mean, going, going back to uh, May, of this year, it's been pretty much straight up with a little bit of sideways action in there. Um, I, I put this little trend line on here, not because I really look at trend lines or use them as support and resistant, but resistance. But it is a pretty definitive one, and, and so we'll see if it bounces off that and rolls over. Obviously, that would help our position, but we'll see what happens. Uh, next trade, Costco. All right, so we got we got in this trade right here on this big down day here, and this is a pre-earnings long call. So we were looking for price to increase as well as implied volatility to expand going into the earnings announcement, which is next week on October fourth. Uh, what has happened? So after we put that on, st uh, the stock price dropped a little bit and then has just stayed extremely flat right here, which in turn has caused implied volatility just to grind lower. And so both of those things, lower prices and lower implied volatility, neither one of those has helped us out. Um, and so we are, we're down on this trade and just looking for potentially a little spike up. I mean, if we just get up to that 240 level, we'll, we'll take a little bit of profit out of the trade, but we'll see what happens. Not looking too good at this point. Uh, down a couple, two, three hundred dollars on the trade right now. Yeah, about two ninety eight, about three hundred bucks. 
is what we're down. So hopefully we can either get out with a smaller loss next week or, you know, like I said, if we get up to 240, we'll be in the in the uh, profit there. Uh, of course, anything above that would be gravy as well. So we'll see what happens there. DIA, the Dow ETF, we've got a couple of short call verticals on here that were previously part of Iron Condors as well. Just looking for some downside to benefit that. We have continued to keep those on to keep that short delta exposure in our portfolio. And by the way, just to give you kind of an update, I don't think I mentioned in any of the alerts this week, but we're at about three, between three and three and a half to one on our short delta to theta ratio. So for every $100 of theta, we've got about $350 of short delta. And we remember, we like to be in that kind of one-to-one to five-to-one -one ratio of short delta versus our theta. And as, as the markets move and fluctuate, uh, we like to keep in that range. And so we're, gonna get, we're in a good spot here. Obviously, a nice flush downward in, the, in stocks would, would be very helpful. Uh, but if not, we'll continue to man, uh, monitor and manage as needed. EEM. I uh, already mentioned that one. That's the adjusted strangle that we rolled out to November. EWZ, we've got a short strangle on here. You can see we've got a little bit of profit. Not enough to take off yet. Uh, and this is, uh, we'd closed out of our EWZ trade last week and then we jumped back in. So this is a brand new trade. So this we, don't, we haven't done any adjustments or anything to this piece yet, to this position. So up about 90 bucks, looking for you know anywhere from 30 to 50% of max profit before we do anything here. And at EWZ, I mentioned this last week, but you know implied volatility continues to stay elevated primarily due to the upcoming election. October 7th is when the election starts. And then there's another voting. Uh, I don't know exactly how that <laughs> how that election works over there, but there's another round of voting. I think it's October 28th, and uh, and so leading up to that, I think implied volatility is going to continue to stay high. But as you can see, with time passing, we're still getting that theta decay. Uh, if we do get a contraction in implied volatility, this this profit line will jump up even quicker. Uh, but we'll just continue to to watch that and monitor it. Uh, and we will definitely be playing that during the election. Um, you know, it's going to be most likely pretty volatile. So if, if that doesn't fit your risk tolerance, beware, stay out if, if you want to, but we will be in it. Uh, FXI, we've still got a couple of butterflies on here. One is in October. You can see prices hanging out near the upper end of the range here. Just need a little bit of downside in FXI to, uh, to benefit that one. And then we've also got this November fly on, which is our call butterfly. You can see price is very centered. Got some profit there, but not quite enough to take off yet. So we'll continue to watch that. I mentioned IWM. IYR, we've got this uh, pretty tight iron condor. When I say tight, I just mean the, the short strikes are a little bit closer to when we put it on or we're closer to the current price than, than typical. We do that to just collect enough credit to make the trade worth it. You can see price is just kind of hanging out here. Got a tiny bit of profit. Need a little bit of upside in price and some more contraction in IV before we do anything there. In the queues, we got a couple of short call verticals. One is in October. As you can see here, price is still in the range. Uh, could use some more downside to benefit that. And then we've got the one out in November, which is the same story. So very similar strikes. They're just one strike apart, and uh, but they're in different expiration cycles. So we just kind of diversified that time, kind of like we mentioned in ES as well. So just looking for some downside, keeping these on for, to uh, help with that short delta exposure in our overall portfolio. SMH, I already mentioned that one. Got that short strangle on there. TLT. The notes uh, and bonds, we've got uh, an iron condor on here, up about 100 bucks, looking for some more profit before we book that one. If we take a look at the charts, you can see implied volatility has really gotten crushed, uh, but we just haven't been in the trade long enough to get to that profit target yet, so we'll continue to watch that one. And then lastly, XLK, a technology ETF. You can see we just need some downside to benefit that. This is a long put vertical that we originally put on 
for additional short exposure, short delta in our portfolio. And we've just continued to roll that for a couple cycles. And uh, we'll continue to keep it on at this point because we need that short delta exposure. So those are all the trades. Those are all the positions. Hope everybody has a great weekend. Let's uh, look for hopefully some more volatility next week. That'd be nice, right? Uh, talk to you guys next week. Have a good one. Bye.